All yeah. I could do was cry wow. and lift my hands like this on the ground. Wow. And God took away one high and gave me a new one. The reality is, God is releasing a sound of a generation. Mm. And the sound is worship. Yeah. And when worship takes place on the earth, heaven becomes reality on the earth. Wow. But here's the deal. When it comes to the sound, we believe Sunday service worship. We believe Christian conference worship, which is key, which is important. Mm -hmm. But when I think of non-believers, the sound they are listening to is a sound of hip hop. That's right. The sound of culture. No and I believe today I'm sitting with somebody that has a sound of heaven, mm. the sound of a generation mm. that will impact the nations of the earth for Jesus. Ah, uh, come on. So we were just talking right now that when we think of non-believers, mm. right? Many non-believers, they're not listening to soft rock. Yeah. They're not listening to, I guess, contemporary music for mm. the most part. They're listening to hip hop. Yeah. That's what a lot of the culture of non-believers listens to. So yeah. could it be that one of the main entryways for non-believers mm -hmm. into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, into mm -hmm. Jesus, is through hip hop? What are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. My thoughts are, I think you're absolutely correct. You know, there's even a study that came out that says Christian hip hop is going to be the most profitable genre within the next five years Whoa. over any genre, right? Because people are finding purpose in it. They're finding light. They're finding hope. Uh, if you look around, people are soul searching. They're searching yeah. for something positive. They're waking up to the fact like, yo, all the music I'm listening to is about violence. It's about drugs. It's mm. about sex. Like, is this really feeding me? So people are hungry for something more and we get to offer that with the language they speak. Yeah. Oh, wow. man. Yeah, and I even th I think take it a step step further is like mm -hmm. I remember from my personal story growing mm -hmm. up I was listening to Wheezy, I was listening to Drake, uh, I was listening to all these people because it was part of my culture, mm -hmm. it was part of where I grew up. When I first got saved, yes, I was listening to Sunday morning worship and I was listening to iconic people in that space, mm -hmm. but when I found Christian hip hop, it felt like who I was, a part yeah. of it almost felt like, hey, and, and don't get me wrong, when we become a Christian, we become born again, mm -hmm. we die to ourselves, sinful nature died, that's the, I'm, I'm with that, I'm 100% agree, agreement. But there's a part of people, there's a, there's a people on the earth mm -hmm. where we relate to hip hop. That's, that's right. the sound, that's right. the sound that caught our attention at the youngest age. Yeah. And I think for so long in the church, when we think of Christian hip hop mm -hmm. or Christian culture, we kind of mm -hmm. go, oh, that's like cool, that's, that's cute, that's for like the young bucks. Right. But the truth is, I believe there's a bigger majority than we think of believers. And when I say believers, I'm talking solid believers, wow. Holy Spirit filled who are saying, is there anybody right now mm. who has a sound of hip hop that's a mm. solid believer, mm. believes in revival, believes in prayer, believes in the prophetic, mm. and is willing and is actually talented and is growing that gift? Mm. And so when I look at you, bro, and I'm like, man, you know, two, three years ago, you were working at what, a bank? Wells Fargo, yes. <laughs> you're, working, you're working at Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. but you had been creating music, you yeah. had a little bit of a journey, a little bit of a story, and now in two to three years, bro, the Lord is literally, take, literally taking you to the nations. Mm. So take us mm. on that journey, because we're, we're gonna get into culture, yeah. we're gonna get into music, but how did, how did Miles Minnick even get to this place today? Yeah. You know, it's a really interesting story, bro. I grew up around a lot of rappers, singers, and producers, right? My mm -hmm. uncle turned my grandma's garage into this full-length studio, and I was this introverted kid sitting in the corner just witnessing my cousins and my brother just making music for fun, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't talking, but I was absorbing. Yeah. And I was embracing it in my downtime. And so, man, one day when I was 14 years old, just, you know, this is BC, too, like yeah, before yeah. Christ. When yeah. I was 14, bro, I was at uh, Great America, which is a theme park in the Bay Area, and uh, I seen 20 girls following me around this park. Like 20 of them, just like almost stalking me a little yeah. bit. And I'm like, why are these girls stalking me? But when I, when I realized what they were doing, they were following me because they thought I was a little Bow Wow. <laughs> they thought I was a little Bow Wow. Crazy. And so me being 14 years old before Christ, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, listen, if rappers get this kind of attention, mm -hmm. let me be a rapper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm -hmm. how I really got into it. Started trying out on my own. Uh, I had a secular rap group in high school. We was doing talent shows, performing at 21 and up clubs. Wow. In San Francisco, Oakland, like really getting some traction. Um, but around that same time, I gave my life to Jesus. Whoa. And so there was a tug of war in my soul. Like, God, I feel like you're calling me to do music for you, but I have this dream. Mm -hmm. God, I feel like you're calling me higher, but I can't let go of this. Yeah. And so uh, I remember telling God personally, too, I was like, Lord. I'll do music for you after I get famous, right? I, like that, that's <laughs> yeah, what I yeah. do. But yo, like God is so strategic. Like yes. He has His ways to get our attention and to get us to lean into what He's calling us into. Yep. And so when I was 17, bro, senior year of high school, there was a talent show at my school, and that's when I, I went solo from the group. Wow. And the judges 
of this talent show were Christian rap artists. What? Bro, they were Christian artists. That's crazy. And I said, bro, if I'm going to win this talent show, let me do a Christian rap song. Come on now. Let me do a, let yeah. me just, you know, I'm saved. I know yeah. Jesus a little bit. <laughs> let me do this Christian rap song. And bro, I went to the studio to do this song. The engineer was an atheist. They smoking, they doing cocaine in the studio, whatever. I'm doing this song. Everybody in the studio was like, yo, this song go crazy. Oh my God, you believe in Jesus? It's ministering the folks in the yeah, studio. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yo, this, this song feels, it feels right like yeah. when I'm doing it. But you're not even really like w walking with Jesus though. I wasn't all the way walking with him, but I'm like, yo, when, I, when I'm making music for him, this feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. Like yeah. it, it flowed out of me yeah. effortlessly. Yeah. And it was the best song I've done up to that point. And so I did that song in the studio, took it to the talent show. Bro, when I performed it, 2,000 kids erupted with energy, crazy. dance moves, going crazy, popping their collars, going dumb. And I ended up winning the grand prize, whole talent show with a Christian rap song. I said, okay, God, I see what you're doing. Man. I see what you're doing. So that's really what got me into the, the faith-based music and really my faith-based journey with ministry and everything is yeah, yeah. that moment. So let's do this because I know we're about to dive into the music and the culture side and so many people watching are in that space mm -hmm. or they want to be in that space. But I think it's so critical to share the testimony, mm -hmm. right? Because the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony and not living our life unto death. Mm -hmm. So when we share a testimony, that root word is literally do it again, God. Mm -hmm. So share. So obviously you weren't walking with the Lord, but you did this. You did this high school Christian rap song. You yeah. won. But yeah. where is your heart at with the Lord? How did you yeah. encounter him? How, what was that journey like? Oh, bro, that's so good. That's so good. So age 16, 17, 18 was three different markers that changed my life forever when it comes to my walk with the Lord. When I was 16 years old, uh, I used to be a heavy smoker. Mm. Not cigarettes, weed, yeah. dro, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I was smoking every day, sometimes four or five blunt wow. joints a yeah. day. And so uh, it was a real stronghold in my life. But one day in the middle of a smoking session when I was 15, my friend Dante was like, bro, we should go to church tonight. <laughs> I'm like, just smoke in the air. <laughs> this literal smoke. He's like, we should go to church. Oof. I'm like, bro, go to church? Like, now? Yeah. He's like, yeah, bro, we should go to church because there's a lot of cute girls at the youth group. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of the Deer Valley girls go there. A lot of the high school girls go there. We could go get their numbers or whatever. And so they convinced me. They dragged me into the church. But coincidentally, uh, even though I don't believe in coincidence, yeah. I believe in divine appointments Come and on, God man. intervening in your situation. Coincidentally, the youth group was closed that night. Whoa. So we had to go into the main sanctuary. Mm. And me being the main person who didn't want to be in the church that night, I was the main person on the edge of my seat, clapping my hands to the songs, lifting my hands to the worship, feeling something I never felt before, not wow. knowing what it was. Yeah. Mind you, we're high. Yeah. Like I'm on drugs like, yeah. in that moment. But when the sermon was being preached, I'm on the edge of my seat, just like leaning in. And my friends thought I was crazy. They didn't know what was going on. Yeah. They didn't feel what I felt for whatever reason, but I felt it. It was a tug on me. Wow. And then when the pastor gave an altar call, without me even knowing what an altar call was, mm -hmm. I was not a church person. Yeah. Like I didn't grow up in church. Pull a God. He said, and this is tugging on your heart. If you feel this message, if you want to receive Jesus, come to the front. I was the only one come in on. this mega church that <laughs> went to the front. I'm literally fresh off the street, literally yeah. out of a smoking session. I went to the front, lifted my hands. I'm crying my eyes out, not even knowing why. I'm like, Lord, oh my God, like what is happening, right? And I, I, this might be controversial, but I heard the voice of God when I was 16 years old. And I heard the voice of God. He said, I'm about to touch you. 10 seconds later, the pastor come across the room, lays hands on me. I collapse wow. in the spirit, bro. Yeah. I can barely move. All yeah. I can do is cry wow. and lift my hands like this on the ground. Wow. And God took away one high and gave me a new one. And so that started my journey because after that moment, yeah. I went to church every single mm -hmm. Wednesday mm -hmm. by myself. Yep. Them boys that brought me never came back with me. Yep. I didn't know anybody at that church. All I knew was I experienced God in that church and I wanted more and more and more and more. And so that was the beginning of it. And the talent show was, you know, him wooing yeah. my yeah. gift. But then when I was 18, that was another layer of it, but I'll let you say Well, real that. quick, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. two things that I did, did literally hit me right now as you're sharing your story. Number one, I actually have the same exact story in regards mm. to the church. When I first went to the church, I was invited by a friend, mm. went with her and her grandma. After that week that I went to church with them, they never came back to the church with me. Wow. I went by myself. So when you said that, I was like, whoa, 
Yeah. Second thing, this just hit me right now, making sure I'm understanding this well. Mm. I thought when you were having that smoking session and your friend said, hey, let's go to church, I thought that was like you guys went a few days later. You're saying you went like, like right from the smoking session, hopped in the car, hopped literally. in the whip, and just went right to church. Power of God touches you, you get saved. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so I'm believing right now, if there's anybody watching this or you have a family mm. member that's watching this, mm. that they don't walk with the Lord, they could be one invitation. <sighs> One invitation away from the power of God touch them unto salvation. That's but you have word. to receive it by faith. The Bible says mm. we receive the promises of God by faith. Mm. Faith is not just a feeling. If you have a feeling, amen. But if you don't, mm. it's faith. Mm. So I just encourage anybody. We, we're, see, this is more than a podcast and a talk. Yeah. Right. We're going to get yeah. into the nitty gritty and the practicals. But I'm believing for people to be touched by the gospel, just by watching this video, maybe impact their family, their friend, whatever. So just receive that by faith if you're watching oh, that. Um, the but, power of an invitation. Mm -hmm. That invitation changed my life, literally. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here today. That's mm -hmm. why I'm in Long Beach. That's why I'm Miles Minnick. That's why I have my wife and my children because of yeah. that one invitation. Yeah. And it was an inconvenient invitation. Yeah. I was in the middle of a smoking session. Right. That 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 shows me like it doesn't matter what somebody's going through, where they are in life, what they're doing in that that particular moment. Invite them. Yeah. Bring it up. Yeah. Show them the benefit of going. Yeah. And bring them. And, and here's the thought that I'm having. Who knows who was in receding for you, bro? Because oh. the truth is, there's oh. probably not a, there might not have been a Christian in your small, near circle mm. that would have shared the gospel or invited you, but there was somebody who prayed for a Miles Minnick. Mm. And it took that prayer mm. to, to touch your friend's heart in the spirit who was literally smoking a blunt to say, let's go mm. to church. Now, mm. people can say, oh, Ross, you don't know that. You're right. I don't know that, but I believe by faith. 100%. But I believe by faith. Definitely. Yeah, you know? my grandma, my nanny, my dad. You know, my dad, he felt like God was calling him to be a minister, but he missed. Mm. He missed it. So he felt like that was meant for me. Wow. And so he would always pray that God would cover me. Wow. Even though he wasn't living that life at all. Yeah. You talk about drugs, women, alcohol. Yeah. But he always still had that. Yeah. That in him. Wow. He was like, God, I pray that you save my son, use my son. Crazy. And so he was the one that brought me to church. He's like, I'm not going to church, but I'll take you. Hmm. <laughs> he, <laughs> bro, this is crazy. My mom did the same thing. Really? Many people know my story. Grew up in a, born by artificial insemination, grew up in a lesbian household. When I went to church and got saved, I was too young to drive. Mm. My mom would drive me to church, mm. drive back home, come back and pick me up, take me home. Oh my God. I didn't know this. We were, I mean, we've known each other for like yeah. about a year and a half now we, and the parallels just hitting right now live no, it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's wild. Crazy. But I, I also want to, I know this is a heavy moment, but I do want to transition a little bit because yeah. I'm like, okay, so, you know, we have these marketing encounters with God, you and I and people watching. How in the world do you go from a marketing encounter with God's salvation, which is the most important thing. Hear me out mm -hmm. as I transition. This is mm -hmm. the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But then what happens where you have this skill set mm -hmm. of music, hip hop, rapping, writing, producing, mm -hmm. how, what happens when you encounter God, you have a skill set, how does it develop into walking in the fullness of what God has for you? Whew. So, so for me, when I really gave my life to the Lord, including my gifts, like not just my church attendance, but mm -hmm. my dreams, my talents, my passions, all of that, I was doing a lot of things for free. Yeah. Like everything, I was doing everything for free. Yeah. I was doing little poetry events, community events. I was performing for the youth at the mm. church. I stayed plugged in and I volunteered to do whatever the youth group needed, mm -hmm. which fueled my gift and shaped me on how to speak publicly, learn. on how to do announcements and how to, uh, 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 you know, enunciate my words yeah. and be a good speaker on stage. And so this involving myself in the things of God and taking every opportunity I could to serve him through my gift. Local church, right? You were plugged Local in. church. I stayed plugged in. Listen, at my church, I learned how to rap. I learned how to public speak. I learned how to dress. I learned how to do interviews. I learned wow. how to be the man I am today yeah. in church, Yeah. in my church. Yeah. And so really for me, it's just staying tapped in to the local body and taking every opportunity I could to practice my gift, to actually implement it. In those settings. And here's why, I don't wanna get off topic, I wanna stay there, but just for a quick second, mm -hmm. I'm finding a vein already in this revival series that I'm doing mm. where every person's story, mm. there is a place where they're plugged in and we should always be, they're plugged into a local church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, I think we forget that in our generation, oh, especially God. as we see the followers and the likes and the stages, which aren't mm -hmm. bad things, you and I are on those full time, mm -hmm. but it's important to be a part of the body. Because oh, so if you're not hard. plugged into the so body, hard. a body part not plugged into the body is dead. 
Oh my God. A body part not plugged into the body is dead. Mm. And so I just want to throw that out there because you can receive impartation, hands laid on you, prophetic words, all this stuff. If you're not plugged into a local church, you're missing out on the design and the fullness of God, of what God has for you. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw that out there as a little side note, Mm -hmm. but keep going. So you're plugged into the local church. You're you're developing a skill set. You're developing not even a skill set, becoming a man of God. Yeah, and yeah. Out of becoming church. a man, your skill set flows. So keep so keep. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You know, and during that time, I became a youth leader mm-hmm. at the church, uh, and then the youth pastor that was over me left to go to Canada, and so they unanimous, unanimously voted for me and my wow. wife Tina to be the youth pastors. Wow. So five years after that encounter. I became the youth pastor of that church in the same youth group I was going to every single Wednesday. Crazy. And so here I am, I was 20, 21 years old with leaders that were 40 and 45 <laughs> years old. Mm-hmm. Like it, was, it was a crazy experience, but the very first Wednesday that I led it, Holy Spirit fell heavy. Wow. Heavy. It was like, you're supposed to be here, confirmation. Yeah. And that, that really shaped me to be who I am now. And even, even me being a youth pastor, which is like a full-time job. Yep. I had a full-time job at the bank mm. at the same time. And with me doing the youth pastor thing and the Wells Fargo thing, at nighttime when I had the time, I was still working on yeah. the music. Mm-hmm. I was still pursuing the music, honing my craft, making songs, putting out songs, just making songs to, to learn from my previous songs. And you had a wife and kids, at, wife and kid or wife and kids at that point? At that point, I had two kids and a wife. Mm-hmm. Another point, For start, write this down if you're in notes, practical number one, Yeah. you might be tired, you might have a spouse, you might have kids, you might have a job, you might be in the local church, but you can Mm. find an hour, two, Mm. three, to keep working on that craft that God has given Mm. you in that Mm. quote unquote off time. Absolutely. So I think that's practical number one as we're, I want people to see these things because you can hear all these things go, that sounds good, that sounds good, but Mm. apply it to your life. Mm. You're working in nine to five right now, you're in college right now, well when you have one, two, three hours at night, work on the music, work on writing. Be with yeah. God. Be in the scriptures. Let him give you songs. Let him give you hooks. Mm-hmm. Let him give you melodies, right? So, mm-hmm. keep, so keep taking us on this journey. I, I couldn't allow anything to become an excuse for me to step away from what God called me to. Mm-hmm. I knew for a fact that God wanted me to do music. I knew he put the dream inside of me. I knew he wanted to use me in that realm. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't going to let these other blessings keep me from doing that. Yeah. I feel like I would be disobedient. I wanted to show the Lord that I could handle all the things he put on my plate. Uh, the marriage, me being a parent, the youth pastor position, and the Wells Fargo job. Right, all of those things. I wanted to show him I could steward that and still go after this. Come on. That's very important. Um, and then, then, yeah, bro, beyond that, I was just serving. Serving and serving and serving, serving at the bank, serving at the church, until one day, bro, uh, Tina and I got confirmation to leave that church. But I want somebody to hear this. Yes. <laughs> While we got the confirmation to leave the church, we had a meeting with our pastor. We said, God, we feel Pastor, sorry, not God. <laughs> pastor, we feel like God is calling us to leave the church, but here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to raise up a team and new youth pastors for you. We're going to be here for another year to make sure that we lead this ministry better than how we found it, wow. to have a, a, a well-running machine before we depart. And so we did. We served for another year. Wow. Another year serving, building up other people to make sure our departure was Come not on, in vain. Man. And that that's that's stewardship. A lot of people are so zealous that just want to depart, yeah. abort mission, you know, leave leave something desolate or without yeah. a leader. We did not want to do that. But here's here's the thing. During that time, I felt the Holy Spirit say, put your all, your all into the music and watch what I do with it. Wow. That was January of 2018. After he said that, that's when we're like getting out yeah. of the ministry. I did what he said. And then everything started breaking open. Wait, tell the story. Maybe you were going to tell it, but I don't want to miss it. What did mm. the person at your boss at the bank tell you, though? Because remember, so you start doing music. I think it's a little bit after this, but don't forget that story. Because mm. they got to hear this story. Because oh, this is what I'm hearing right now is the story of David. You mm. take care of the bear and the lion in private, mm. and then you can step out in faith in mm. the public to slay the Goliath. Mm. But those bears and lions, sometimes they're actual people in your life. The Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood. So people aren't the issue. It's what they're influenced by. But I want to make sure we don't miss that part of the story. 100%. 100%. We really need like a two-hour sit down because <laughs> there's so much that we can unpack. Yeah. There's so much we can unpack. But here's the thing, right? Top of 2018, when God told me to go after the music and he'll bless it, I started going after the music. He started blessing it. 
but initially he wasn't blessing it in um, in a way of finances. Yeah, he was blessing it with influence and mm-hmm. me stumbling into miracles, me stumbling into songs that was like going crazy and me being yeah. called out to perform everywhere, right? Because because during that time too, I was still looking for excuses to quit my Wells Fargo job. Mm. I was still like, yeah. oh, I'm getting a little bit of buzz. Yeah, I'm yeah. about to quit. Yeah. I'm about to get up out of here <laughs> and work for the church or be full time rapper. Because that that was my that was what was pulling me. Yeah. You know, which now looking back on it, it's like that shouldn't have been the thing that was pulling me. Yeah. Me, me being obedient to the Lord should have been more of a focus for me. Mm. But I was focused on just becoming something yeah. instead of being a son, being a servant, so being a follower. Right. So during that time, buzzing a little bit at Wells Fargo, I quit. Like, all right, y'all. I'm out. I'm out of here. It's lit. <laughs> I'll see y'all soon. But then a month after that. I felt, bro, see, God God be talking. We just got to listen. Mm. The Holy Spirit told me, I'm going to need you to apply for another bank. Um, it's, it's not going to work out the way you want it to right now. I'm going to need you to apply for another bank. Mm. I applied for that other bank. I got approved for it. And then everything he told me what happened, happened. And I'm like, God, what is going on? What is happening? And that, that's when I said, see, somebody got to hear this too. That's when I said, Lord, I'm not going to rush you anymore. You see, because I was in a place where I was rushing God and not trusting God. Yeah. I'm not gonna rush wow. you. If you want, if you want me to be full time music, I'm gonna let you do it. I'm gonna let you rock with it. It's whatever. I'm gonna serve you through this job, Travis yeah. Credit Union, and I'm gonna still do music. But if you want me to be full time, I'm gonna need you to do yeah. it. I'm gonna need you to do it. And after I adopted that mindset, six months into mm. it, my career calling the music started bubbling wow. beyond what it was. Yeah. But I told God I wasn't going.